today's Liturgy of the Word opens up the whole problematic of the prophetic calling. Today's readings reveal the opposition that a prophet may experience when calling people to repentance. In our first reading, God let Jeremiah know that his efforts had caused his enemies to plot against him. And in today's gospel, the opposition of the chief priests and Pharisees to Jesus and all that he stood for continued to grow and would lead to his eventual passion, death, and execution on the cross. Jewish scholars tell us that in the 2,000 years since Jesus died, there have been 50 Jewish messiahs. That is to say that on average throughout the whole of Jewish history, there have been, at least for the Jewish people, a false prophet who claimed to be the messiah every 40 years. Today's readings also pick up on yesterday's theme of the persecution of the good by evil, the victimization of virtue by vice. First, we hear Jeremiah tell of his woes when the scene moves forward to the time of Jesus. The degree of animosity gathering around him may have taken Jeremiah by surprise, but it could hardly have been news to Jesus. The buzz was all around him, asking, who is this man? The much-anticipated prophet like Moses? The long-awaited Messiah? The anointed one of Israel? The descendant of the great King David who could be counted on to restore the Jewish nation? An incredible wonder worker? All of the above? None of the above? Many saw him in a far harsher light as a troublemaker, a rabble rouser, and a fraud. So we hear where the common people said that Jesus probably was the expected Messiah because of his authoritative teaching and authentic miracles. But the Pharisees and the scribes and the Jewish priests could only see Jesus as a Galilean from Nazareth and argued from Scripture that the real Messiah must be born in David's family, Bethlehem. The temple police who were sent to arrest Jesus reported that they did not arrest Jesus because nobody ever spoke like this. They were impressed by Jesus' wisdom and authoritative teaching. Further, Nicodemus, a prominent member of the Supreme Council of the Jewish people, argued for Jesus, demanding a fair trial for him before they had Jesus punished for blasphemy on unfounded claims. In other words, the people of Jesus' day were divided. They were all over the map as to who Jesus was, that is to say, what his true identity was. This is not all that different from the situation we have today. The question is, who is Jesus really? Ultimately, all faiths issue from Christians hang on that single question. How each of us answers it will in a large part determine the direction of our lives, what we value, how we love, why we live. It didn't merely fall to the crowds in John's gospel to grapple with Jesus' identity. It falls to every one of every time and place who takes Jesus seriously. It falls to all of us, and it is the one question we must answer before our journey on this earth ends. So it would be my fond hope and prayer throughout the remainder of this Lenten season that more and more people can honestly and with integrity profess, we believe in Jesus' teaching based on his authority as God. We believe in the sacred scriptures based on the teaching authority Jesus gave to Peter and his successors. And finally, 
We believe and follow the Bible as the guide of our Christian life and accept the traditional interpretation given to the Word of God by the teaching authority of the church. Today, we Christians are called to be a sign of contradiction, just as Simeon described Jesus, because we are different when we stand for Christ and choose his teachings while others reject them. Let us have and act on the courage of our Christian convictions. My brothers and sisters, let us offer our prayers to God for all those who are in need. We pray for the church that her pronouncements may always sound forth a prophetic voice of justice and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For world leaders that they may stand up for the rights of all whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For victims of wars and natural disasters that they may receive help in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick that they may experience the consoling love of Jesus in their suffering, we pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, that they may have eternal rest in heaven, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we call upon you and ask that you hear these petitions and grant what we need. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and brother. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash me from my sinfulness, make me worthy to enter and truly celebrate these sacred mysteries of your great love for all of God's people. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Father, accept our gifts and make our hearts obedient to your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. You asked us to express our thanks by self-denial. We are to master our sinfulness and conquer our pride. We are to show to those in need your goodness. Now with all the saints and angels, we praise you forever as we sing. Song to 